Solubility of a substance is the amount of solute that dissolves in a particular volume of solvent at a particular temperature. In case a solute does not dissolve in a solvent, it is termed as insoluble. For example, lead is insoluble in water. When sugar is added to water, it will dissolve, which means it is soluble in water. When oil is added to water, it does not even mix. Why does some substance dissolve in water while some do not? According to the particle theory, matter is made up of tiny particles that are in constant motion. These particles are atom or molecules. When a solute dissolves in a solvent, the particles of solute get separated and spread out evenly in the solvent. When a solute dissolves in solvent, it has to be attracted towards the solvent. This attraction should be strong enough to separate solvent and solute molecules from their respective molecules. Sugar dissolves in water as sugar molecules are strongly attracted to water. The attraction is strong enough to pull sugar molecules and water molecules towards each other. Oil and water do not mix or dissolve as there is very less attraction between their molecules. The oil molecules prefer other oil molecules while water molecule stays with other water molecules. Oil and water form separate layers instead of mixing together and are referred as immiscible.
we're going to do a quick investigation of involving solubility of gases in a liquid. To do this, it works better if you use a dark colored liquid. So we've selected a grape crush soda. Guys, you want to go ahead and open these up and start to fill your test tubes. We have identical test tubes with a one-hold stopper here and three beakers containing water at different temperatures. Jeff has a beaker of cold water. It's about zero degrees. There's a small amount of ice still in it. I have room temperature water, which today is about 27 degrees. And Mike has the hot water. What we're going to do is simply fill our test tubes up with the soda without spilling. You could actually make this more quantitative if you predetermine exact temperatures for your hot, room temperature, and cold. It might work real nicely if you had 10 degrees higher, 10 degrees uh, hotter, 10 degrees colder. And all we're going to do here is take and place our fingers over the stopper. We're going to invert it beneath the surface of the liquid. And once it's there, take it all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to move these just a little bit closer together. We want to make our observations. One of the first things that you'd notice is going to be at the top of the test tubes. Now this one, for some reason, has got a lot more of the uh, liquid. One of the things you want to make sure of is when moving. you fill the test tubes is that when you put the stopper in, the liquid overflows so you don't have a container of gas at the top to right. begin with. Right. But as far as looking at the motion of the gases, this one's definitely moving a lot faster. When it's in the hot water, you can see the... Um, grape crush coming out of the bottom. You can see the level inside the test tube moving lower, lower, and lower. If you can zoom in on the hot solution, which is the third beaker here, Look at the number of gas bubbles that you can see escaping along the sides. Is that real obvious to those of you in the audience? Okay, that tells you something right there, that the gas, carbon dioxide, which is providing the carbonation in this case, is going to be less soluble at the higher temperatures. And that's true for most gases. You talk to students about how if they go out and play basketball in the middle of July in the Midwest, set their pop down on the table, they come back an hour later, oh, it's so flat, it tastes awful. That's because the atmosphere has warmed it up, it's released the gases, it can't hold it, they're just not as soluble at the higher temperatures. Now, Mike, this video will be shown all over the world, so we should maybe insert soda or Coca-Cola or tonic. Or pop. Or pop, that's right. I like doing this because most of the things I do in, classroom, in my classroom involve solids in liquids, which is a more typical type of a solution. And, and uh, trying to work with solubility of gases, this is so quick and easy. And you can do it without any quantitation if you want, just like we're doing it here. It's so obvious that how fast the uh, carbon dioxide is coming out of the solution here. And you can see the uh, levels lowering so fast in that tube. One, in, one environmental application for this is if you talk about the spring and fall overturns in lakes and ponds, what happens is as the density of the water changes, it actually churns over the water. As lakes and ponds you know, are cool, they might contain more oxygen. You, know, you have to go to cooler places to fish for game fish that have higher metabolisms that need the high levels of energy. So you know, your fast moving rivers and streams and the colder uh, areas north are a good place for game fishing. Whereas catfish and the slow moving fish 
that don't need as much oxygen can live in the warmer climates when in the summertime, you know, a lot of the oxygen comes out of there for that. So uh, another application and a, and a place to, to show kids and try to meet them at the level that they might have some form of interest to this. My favorite thing to do in the classroom is simply to go over to a, one of the sinks in my room, take a great big beaker, tall beaker or cylinder, let the water run for a long time, get it very, very hot coming out of the tap, and then just collect a beaker of tap water, really hot tap water. And it looks frothy white. And if you observe it very carefully, you can see clearing at the bottom of the beaker first and the white appearance, it's almost like uh, uh, is, is moving towards the surface, towards the surface, and so all the gases are escaping. Once the gases come out of solution, that gives you the white appearance throughout the container, and then as the gases, because of being less dense, start to rise, clearing at the bottom of the uh, uh, container, and the last thing you see is clearing at the top. And just by running the water in your, in your tap, you can talk about solubility of gases. That can't, there, I don't think there can be anything easier than that. But look at what we've got here already. A nice demo because it's cheap, it's easy, it's quick to reset, and one that the kids can just buy into immediately the minute that they see it. To make sure that it's really clear, let's take, the, take our tubes. We're just going to hold, hold them up at about the same level, but let's not remove them from uh, underneath the surface of the liquid. And we can see that uh, the level of the uh, crush has gone down most in the hot water. Probably the um, room temperature water would be second. And we had a real uh, big start with the cold for some reason, but it's really slowed down and the room temperature water mm -hmm. has now got more of the pop removed. Try it with your classes. The solubility of a gas in any solvent is proportional to the pressure of the gas over the liquid. Here we see a gas in equilibrium between the liquid and gas phases. When the gas is compressed, the solubility of the gas in the liquid phase increases in proportion to the increased pressure. The relationship between gas pressure and solubility is known as Henry's Law.